and welcome to Wednesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Apple is in VR news again, Valve is rumored to be on very shaky grounds regarding virtual reality in general, the big performance update for the Quest 2 is finally here, and Deca Gear is more than likely no more. And I got all the information on that entire situation. That and so much more, let's just get right into the news. Alright, so let's start this one off with a pretty interesting article from Stanford on using artificial intelligence to create better, far more realistic displays for AR and VR applications. Right now, VR headsets, as realistic and good as some of them might look, use a relatively old technology for 3D, and it's a technique called stereoscopy, using two flat images side by side rendered at slightly different angles to achieve a somewhat believable 3D effect. But at the core, the headsets we have now are really only displaying 2D images, and you can only go so far with that. One display technology that could potentially change this are holographic displays, or more properly, literal laser-based holograms within a headset to give actual three dimensions of depth. But there's always been a very fundamental problem with hologram or holographic technology, and these issues are a lot of why we don't see laser holograms being used everywhere. Holograms are very expensive, energy inefficient, and usually don't look very good. The main issue being proper control over the shape of the light waves. Right now, there's a lot of noise and grain due to this lack of light wave control, and of course the technology is just large and inefficient. However, the overall potential of using laser holograms and holographic displays could result in a true 3D environment, because as of now, current displays are quote, not perceptually realistic. And this is where the fun begins. For one of the first times ever, Stanford is using artificial intelligence to create what they call a neural holographic display, adding a camera into the loop that views the holographic image, and adjust the light wave shape algorithm on the fly to get the clearest image possible. Used alongside their artificial intelligence loop, they're now using LEDs and SLEDs instead of the laser technology that was used before. This, of course, isn't something we'll be seeing in next year's VR headsets or AR glasses soon, but this is a massive leap forward for display technology for XR and really anything in general. And this could lead to creating far more immersive environments that are easier on the eyes while being more believable. Now let's finally talk about the DECA gear. DECA and Megadodo are all topics that I probably get asked about on a weekly, sometimes daily basis, and all of the news I'm about to break honestly kind of sucks for everyone involved, because it seems all of the promises of the DECA gear may just be shattered completely. And if you have a pre-order or you know someone that has a pre-order, you might just want to listen to this one. If you have no idea what DECA gear is, let me give you a quick rundown, and even if you don't care about this headset, it is a valuable lesson for the VR industry and our community in general. The Deca Gear is a VR headset that was announced about a year ago, and to a VR enthusiast, especially an enthusiast on a budget, it seemed like kind of a dream come true. It hit all of the points that we could ask for. $450, 4K displays, face tracking, finger tracking, eye tracking, a wireless head strap add-on, all built by a company that in their marketing put community and privacy first. And to be honest, the headset seemed like a great middle point between something like a Quest 2 and a Valve Index, even offering more features than both of them. But from day one, things have always been a little sketchy. Megadodo, the parent company of Deca Gear, were brand new on the scene, never heard of before, and they came with some massive announcement for a brand new headset and immediately opened paid pre-orders for a product nobody has seen yet. However, the promises and marketing videos and transparency, or at least apparent transparency, within the community led the Deca Gear 1 to be something that people were really excited about. Then Megadodo actually launched and shipped their first piece of hardware where the DECA Move, an additional IMU sensor that attached to your hip and allowed hip-based locomotion in VR. Something very, very simple, but it did make playing VR better for cheap and even allowed a phone to be used if you didn't want to buy the actual hardware. And this point is important because this was Megadodo's first hardware release. It was good, the software was good, and it built up a lot of confidence in the actual prize, the DECA Gear headset that people were waiting for. And now fast forward a few months and they've been extremely quiet about the DECA. The release date has been pushed back substantially. Initially, the headset was supposed to ship like now, but it's been pushed back a year plus, and the whole vision for Deca Gear has shifted as well. Possibly increasing in price, a totally redesigned controller, uh, things just started getting really messy and pretty confusing. And now that you're caught up on what Deca Gear was or is, here is why things got messy. And these also aren't public statements, these are conversations that I was given permission to talk about. Basically, a former employee working on the Deca Gear, mostly the software 
software and game side of the project formally exited from the company and left some statements as they did so. Here's what they said, quote, For those of you that have been following the Deki Gear, I'm sorry to say it probably won't happen. Stuff has happened internally that has prompted myself and several other team leaders to leave. It wasn't a scam, but the marketing was greatly exaggerated and the company has pivoted in a direction that I'm no longer comfortable with. Those of you with Deka Move orders should consider getting a refund, end quote. And it seems that a lot of the promises of the original Deka Gear were greatly exaggerated or promised before a functional prototype was ever created. This obviously created a lot of tension within the team as a lot of features were promised to the community and even sold to the community, yet internally, most of these features weren't even demo ready. For example, the face tracking algorithm isn't really that functional, only being trained on about 30 people. The systems were just very early in development, yet the public perception was that this was a finished, nearly ready to ship product. Then with recent shifts from Meta and Facebook, the company decided to pivot and move to a mobile platform to more directly compete with Meta. And this further added to the confusion. A developer on the DECA stating that new controllers were built because the old tracking algorithms didn't work well with Qualcomm chips and everything essentially had to be rebuilt from the ground up. And this brings us to current day. These internal messages stated that sales on the DECA move were practically completely dried up. The whole project was too expensive and it just wasn't lucrative or sustainable. And that they should and need to stop their work on DECA move moving forward. Essentially, the DECA move was going to be cancelled or canned. Also, in these messages state the company's future goals of announcing they will no longer continue as a hardware company as it's not possible anymore. They will likely cancel their current hardware projects and move forward towards creating an open NFT and crypto-based metaverse platform and distribution network to support other companies' hardware and software. <sighs> And in addition to that, there's a lot of hearsay, like rumors that there was never actually a functional prototype of the headset at all, and that all of these videos were just 3D printed mockups, but that has been denied whenever I asked about it. And some sort of crypto NFT blockchain inspired PVP game with casinos in VR. I don't know. All this really means is the DECA gear and DECA move and DECA as we know it is likely somewhat of a dead project. Unless of course they decide to pivot back to hardware, which I I'm welcome to, they just have to publicly be transparent with everybody. There was a lot of promise, a lot of potential, and I think we were all really excited about it, but my own skepticism that I've definitely talked about and everybody else's skepticism seems to have been in the right place here. Definitely look for more official announcements from DECA, as these are all just internal communications that I have either seen or heard or had a conversation around, and their own outward stance may change as a company. And this is also a good lesson for the people in the VR industry. Either starting a company or following one, hype only goes so far. But now it's time for a me break. Future me watching myself download VR chat back in 2017. <laughs> no! 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 And now, back to the news. So just a couple weeks ago, I talked about Meta's pretty cool VR glove research papers, Meta going public on their projects and plans to make haptic force feedback gloves for VR and AR for the future, and all the hurdles that go along with those plans. Well, turns out, those gloves that they showed off have uh, kind of already been in development for years by a totally separate company, one that I have covered on this channel many times, Haptics. I initially saw the similarities between Meta's glove and Haptics, but figured there were enough differences that there was no harm here but it looks like Meta took a little more inspiration from Haptics than I originally thought. Haptics even stating publicly, quote, the Meta gloves appear to be substantively identical to Haptics's patented technology, end quote. Yikes. I mean, it's not the first time Meta or Facebook have infringed on patents or ideas and taken them for themselves, and it likely won't be the last. But this case in particular is really interesting because Haptics is a well-known XR company with decent funding, and they've been in the space making gloves for about a decade now. Pioneering with, as their patent says, silicon-based microfluid tactile feedback laminate and pneumatic control architecture. To put that simply, basically using fluids and air to change the contact surface of the glove so you can feel things. It's a really cool haptic feedback. And Meta says that they are developing the world's first high-speed microfluidic processor, which uh, is a stretch to say the least. Haptic seems to be playing pretty cool here though, stating that they welcome interest and competition in the field of microfluidic haptics. However, competition must be fair for the industry to thrive. And I agree completely. 
Competition, collaboration, and interest is what drive sectors of the industry like this, not stamping out or taking credit for other work. And another thing on Meta and the Quest 2, well, the application space warp that I was talking about weeks ago, giving the Quest 2 a possible 70% performance boost, has just been publicly given out, and a few applications have even used it, and we're seeing what it looks like, and it looks really, really good. This increases the performance headroom of the Quest 2, of course, but also lowers power draw. There's so many benefits here that make the headset better and uh, it actually looks really good. So check out some of the demos if you want. Really, there's not much to say here other than the Quest 2 got a big update and I'm tired of saying that over and over again, but here it is and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So two more things before we wrap up today and both are relatively important. One is on Valve and their future within VR. Rumor has it mainly cemented by Tyler McVicker that Valve expected Half-Life Alex to be a flag planted for PC VR and their own future within it, but the market moving to standalone and Meta's movements in general has caused caused many within the company to second guess whether they want to have any involvement within VR moving forward. And the main idea is that the future of VR at Valve is in jeopardy, all projects potentially cancelled or moved to having a skeleton crew. And Valve responded by saying, quote, We think it's important to reiterate that while Tyler is a passionate gamer, he has no inside information about what goes on at Valve, end quote. <laughs> Poof. Not specifically addressing VR at all, but pretty much saying that this is a dangerous sentiment and not factual. Personally, I think Valve is focusing on the Steam Deck right now, but Valve is far from finished with VR, and all of their patents and research and really investment in the community shows that. Hardware or software, it may just take some time, and we all know Valve only works on Valve time. And a new set of leaks from a pretty reputable analyst, Ming Chi Kuo, show that Apple's VR ventures are still full swing. Looking for a possible 2022 release date, may be packing an M1 chip mixed with 4K OLED displays, pulling in a price of around $1,000 for Apple's VR headset. This guy has a pretty good reputation with a 76% accuracy rate on leaks like this, so, you know, if this comes true, that'd be pretty awesome. Whether you like Apple or not, it's just more companies and more people in the VR hardware space, and not gonna lie, a standalone VR headset with an M1 chip sounds really exciting to me, and could spell a lot of changes for the standard consumer VR space space if this does come true. This one is already running pretty long, so leave a question of the week down below and I'll answer one next week. I'm working on a Tundra Tracker video at the moment, as well as an HP Reverb G2 video at the moment, so stay tuned for that. Also, I will be at LA Comic Con giving a panel on virtual reality and its future just this weekend, so come on in if you're in the area. Also, join up in my Discord community for an awesome VR community, and thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.